this restaurant takes you to the Ukraine to join the fight Hat. and get cooking with some Cold War comrades. I've never tasted anything like it. Then we take off for Texas, where we up the stakes at one very meaty eating contest. Holy cow. Ah, uh, yes. Next, we take a stroll down memory lane to Philadelphia, where history has never tasted so good. Oh, I can taste the history. And what's it taste like? <laughs> Delicious. And finally, we jet to Japan for seafood and chivalry at a cafe run by a boy band. Kimi no koto The Ukraine may no longer be part of the former Soviet Union, but you can still live it up behind the Iron Curtain in Kiev at the Partisan Forest Beer Restaurant. This place is hard to resist. Partisans are Ukrainian heroes who fought against the German and Soviet occupations. We don't just dress like partisan soldiers, we act like them too when we speak with the customers. What was your first impression when you walked in the door here? Traveled in time because this restaurant is really old school. The Partisan Forest Beer Club even carries a retro military theme to their menu. We serve very simple military style food here. Oh, look at this, it's like an old propaganda pamphlet. Comrade, I would like the partisan salad, a groshka. I'll have some dumplings stuffed with cherries. And I'd love to try the Happiness Exists. That's a buckwheat porridge with canned pork and the chicken and walnut sauce. From the moment you walk into the entrance, you realize this is more of a military operation than a restaurant. Over here, you've got a field kitchen, an open hearth, grain storage, as they say, an army runs on its stomach. This place is so much more than just a restaurant. It's a resort for vacationing revolutionaries. Where you've got a stocked fishing pond, cabins where you can enjoy a private meal, and back here, a Russian lodge. Akroshka. Akroshka. Wow, look at this presentation. It's served in the lid of a ration tin. This is absolutely crazy. I'm getting bits of pork, cheese, and crunchy vegetables, along with this dill. Normally, those ingredients would be found in a Russian salad, but you add a bit of yogurt, and all of a sudden, it's a cold soup. My favorite dish is the buckwheat porridge with meat. Thank you. So you've got kasha, which is like a bulgur wheat, and chunks of pork. Simple, hearty, and healthy. Exactly what the resistance fighters need to keep them in the fight. It has all these dishes that people had uh, in the Soviet times. This is what people like about this place, the Soviet spirit and the Soviet atmosphere. That's my partisan salad. Shredded beets mixed with mayonnaise on top, and then below it, I'm getting some onions, some chopped egg, and the really dominant flavor is a salted herring. This may be pretty traditional for a Russian, but for a Westerner, I've never tasted anything like it. This place is dressed up with artifacts from the former Soviet Union. You've got field telephones, old artillery, and old musical instruments. And over here, this canteen, I love it. It says, if you think this is going to be your last day, drink this vodka. This is a hearty meal of rice, vegetables, and lamb, and it's being prepared right here just as it would be in the field. This is the partisan kasha, which is like the Russian equivalent of paella. You've got rice, carrots, chickpeas, and lots of lamb in it, and the lamb is actually infusing the flavor of the rice. I mean, this is exactly what a partisan needs to stay out in the field all day long. The food is great because it's very simple. This next dish is chicken with walnuts. Well, this looks unlike anything that I've tasted so far, and that's because this is a Georgian specialty. Small, crisp pieces of pan-seared chicken smothered in a rich, creamy walnut sauce. This is one Cold War dish that definitely came from a warm heart. Time to get a lesson on how to be a partisan soldier. You want to try partisan hat? Hat. It's nice, partisan in run. Partisan run. Right hand. Like. What do I do this now? Go shoot the bad guys. What do you need to Ah, cherry dumplings. And it's served up with some cherry juice and some heavy cream. First thing you get is the tartness of the cherries, but then the sweetness of the cream and the cherry juice kick in. You get a bit of chew from the dumpling pastry. This is definitely unique. Dare I say revolutionary. 
Where else can you be served by armed resistance fighters? Be surrounded by gas masks, guns, and hand grenades, and have such a good time. Okay. I like the fact that this restaurant is also a museum, and the food tastes great. I like this place because I am proud of my country. Let the revolution begin! Welcome to the Big Texan Steak Ranch here in Amarillo. We're tackling their legendary 72-ounce steak. Requires determination, audacity, and an appetite bigger than the Lone Star State itself. Ah. Holy cow! The Big Texan Steak Ranch is the one and only state phenomenon that represents the big state of Texas and big steaks. The Big Texan Steak Ranch brings in folks from all over the world who check in their fillies at the horse hotel and then saddle up for a steak the size of Texas. Everything around here has just got a little bit crazy. The menu's most notorious item is a 72-ounce steak, and it won't cost you a nickel if you eat it all in under 60 minutes. The cost of the 72-ounce steak right now is $72 for the entire dinner if you don't complete it. I'm going to start with the blazing saddles, prime skins, and for professional purposes, the mountain oysters. Love to try the uh, buffalo quesadilla. That sounds really interesting. Is that real buffalo meat? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And for my main, I'm going to try the big Texan top sirloin topped with sauteed onions. Ah. They don't call this the big Texan steak ranch for nothing. Just the entranceway is bigger than most restaurants. You've got a shooting range, a bar, a candy shop, and a whole menagerie of stuffed animals. This is where all the real action happens. And this area is perfect. Gives the chefs a bird's eye view of the customers trying to take on the 72 ounce steaks. They're up here at this special table. It's got a spotlight, stopwatches. Any uh, last words before you start? Good luck, Nick. Good luck, Ali. <laughs> Men, it's one out of seven that will finish a 72 ounce steak. Women, it's one out of two. Are they going to do it or not? No. No? <laughs> Here you go, sir, your howlers. This is a raw jalapeno pepper cross-sliced, and I can see that the seeds and the membranes are still intact. And then it's battered. That is fantastic. The first thing you get is the texture of the batter. The next thing is the flavor of the jalapeno, and then that heat, it just attacks your mouth. It just all works in such a beautiful way. I mean, the heat, as advertised, the flavor, out of this world. One of the most featured items here on the Big Texan menu is the mountain oysters. I would eat the mountain oysters. I like oysters. Calf balls, if you will. People are nutty over them. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Mountain oysters dipped in a little bit of a tomato salsa. Nope, nothing weird about this. Didn't we mention that they're not really oysters? Tastes like chicken, chicken liver, that is. A really perfectly deep fried chicken liver. <laughs> Is it easier riding horses on the range or serving tables? Um, riding horses. Ah, <laughs> uh, look at this. Steak and potatoes together in a single appetizer. Tender sirloin steak, crispy potato skins, nice warm melted cheese. That's a campfire classic. Ah. 15 minutes into this showdown, and these strangers wish they'd never set foot in these parts. I'm not sure how much I've got left. Don't want to think about it. Check this out. They've just rounded the halfway point. How's it going, gentlemen? Struggling a little bit with it. Steak still tasting good? No, it's good as before. You pull up to the big Texan steak ranch on a horse, I'll give you a place to park it. And if you want to stay overnight at the hotel, they've got a hotel for your horse as well. So uh, what's a horse hotel room cost per night? $25. $25 a night? Think I can stay in one of these? Absolutely. Grab some hay, bedding. You can stay in there. <laughs> You know, anytime you order buffalo chicken wings in a restaurant, you get chicken wings with a buffalo hot sauce. Here, order buffalo quesadilla, you get real buffalo meat. It's a little bit leaner and a little bit gamier than beef, but it's got an amazing flavor to it. And in combination with this jalapeno salsa, that's creating a flavor stampede in my mouth. What is in this chicken fried chicken? Chicken breast. And what's in the chicken fried steak? Because I get very confused about all this. Steak. Steak. <laughs> there you go, sir. Your eight ounce sirloin, the kitty portion of the 72 ounce right here for you. Not only is that perfectly grilled, but it's perfectly aged, perfectly seasoned. And at the very end, they get a little bit of that soy Worcestershire sauce that they based on it. You know, I'm beginning to have second thoughts about ordering that 72 ounce steak. Yeah, I could eat a lot of this. Ah. Two thirds of the way for it. Seven minutes to go. Okay for now. Not doing too bad. Still got steak in my mouth, but I'm putting more in. 
name me another restaurant where you can find great steaks, house brewed beer, a candy store, a horse hotel, all packed into one giant museum dedicated to cowboy kids. And this is Texas perfect. This is what everything is about Texas. All under one roof. All under one roof. How we do it? Game over, finished, defeated. So in this game of man versus steak, the steak wins? Steak wins. Failure. Now this is what I call riding off into the sunset in style. When you take a page out of history at the City Tavern here in Philadelphia, chances are that page is going to be 250 years old. I can taste the history already. Located just down the street from Independence Hall and the Liberty Bell, City Tavern is all about life, liberty, and the pursuit of culinary excellence. Ah, oh, yes, it's the best place in Philadelphia to get a taste of history. Chef Walter Stieg takes you back to the 18th century with his historically accurate cooking. City Tavern is the birthplace of American cuisine. So 250 years ago plus, farm to table, fusion, and great spices happened right here in the City Tavern every day. The staff are dressed as historical figures from the time of the American Revolution. Oh, my name is Benjamin Franklin. But the real George Washington, Paul Revere, and John Adams were actually all once here. And you feel like you're in the middle of history and that George Washington himself might walk through that door. You could say that America's independence was fueled by the food at this restaurant that first opened in 1773. I have more of an education in history here than I had in high school. Can you taste the history in the dish? Oh, I can taste the history. And what's it taste like? <laughs> Delicious. Uh, I'd like to start with the West Indies pepper pot soup. Then I'd like to move on to the colonial turkey pot pie. The venison sounds amazing. How can I resist uh, Benjamin Franklin's tofu? And then lastly, I would love to try the sausage. Perhaps a little ale to go with that? And if your thirst for history still isn't quenched, say hello to a famous American. My name is Benjamin Franklin. I'm a diplomat, scientist, printer, uh, ambassador to France. I ordered Dr. Franklin's tofu. He introduced tofu to America. Benjamin Franklin was the person who brought tofu to America? Stole the recipe. Stole it? I, I did not steal tofu. I, I discovered it in Europe, but it was something they called Chinese cheese. And I've always been curious about food, so I thought that was wonderful. I thought I'd share it with the rest of the world. It's intriguing and flavorful. It's very good. So Ben, now that you've created the genesis for a whole new health movement, you ought to consider yoga. Yoga. The West Indies pepper pot soup. Uh, look at this soup. I mean, chocolate block with beef, the greens, the taro root. It's amazing. You know, the first spoonful, this tastes like a traditional light beef stew. But then the habanero starts to tickle the back of your tongue, and the heat just creeps up. And after that, you get a bit of the allspice, which adds a really distinctive flavor. It's a recipe that's take about 500 years. If I would take it off the menu, I'm sure I'd be lynched, because everybody comes for it. If it's true that an army runs on its stomach, there's no question why the Americans won their independence. The City Tavern was founded in 1773. And if you walked in here back in those days, you'd see pretty much the same thing that you see today. Here on the tables, you've got pewter mugs, candlelight, of course, and ceramic plates. This was George Washington's very favorite room. And in fact, he used to hold court right here in this chair. Maybe if I sit in this chair long enough, I'll put my face on a dollar bill. It was the wild, wild east back in the old days. And when things got a bit crazy at the end of the night, the bartender used to lower these bars to protect himself from the patrons. And that, my friends, is where the name bar comes from. Colonial turkey pot pie. Look at that. City tavern imprinted in the pastry. Generous chunks of turkey, peas, carrots, nice gravy. Uh, that pastry crust, so buttery, so light, so fluffy, just perfect. And the turkey, so tender, it melts in your mouth. Beautiful chunks of turkey and a wonderful gravy. I almost completed the whole pie. This turkey pot pie, just like my great, 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 great grandmother used to make it. But for others at City Tavern, it's more about pie in the sky ideas. So Ben, how does this experiment work? Well, I'm trying to prove that lightning is electricity. The storm is coming. Oh, Bob, would you hold this? Yeah, sure. Isn't this a bit dangerous? Oh, it's perfectly safe. Some of the early clientele here at the City Tavern were German immigrants, and so this dish was created to please their palates. It's so light and airy that it's almost like it's a veal mousse that's wrapped in a casing, and it goes so nicely with the crispy crunchiness of these deep-fried onions. When you pair this with the sausage, 
You've got a dish that's totally revolutionary. Walking into the city tavern is like stepping into a museum, only instead of just looking at the artifacts, you actually get to taste a piece of history. <laughs> it's fun to be a part of history. It's not just a restaurant. We really bring it to life. I felt like I was walking back in time. Where else can you enjoy an authentic 18th century meal, have a beer with Benjamin Franklin, and make it back to the 21st century by the end of the night? He's a natural. Look at that. It's working. It's working. Apparently not. Is this what you call production problems? Some say that business and pleasure don't mix. But here at Tokyo's Love All Cafe, it's a recipe for success. <laughs> Love All Cafe is where the women of Tokyo go to enjoy Japanese-Italian fusion food and get pampered by smartly dressed, celebrity-like waiters. The girls like the boys, like a businessman. I like the ver we're smelling the suit. Service includes the mixing of cocktails and leisurely evening strolls. And for those who can't make it to the restaurant, the boys appear live on their web show. Guys wearing glasses are so sexy. It's a whole lot of love in this room. They're very hot. Yes, yeah. I love it so much. Yeah. And last but not least, they're also a boy band. What other restaurant have you been to where there are actual trading cards of the servers? And now, instead of going out on the road and doing concerts, they're essentially running a restaurant. Genius. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Everything's in Japanese except for the little headings here that say pasta, risotto. So I'm guessing there's a bit of an Italian influence. Yeah, it's a slight Italian. I tell you what, since everything is in Japanese and I have no idea what's on the menu, <laughs> why don't you just bring me the best of everything the chef has to offer? The food is so good, it makes me happy. Salmon carpaccio. Salmon carpaccio. That's really nice. At first, I thought it was more like a cured salmon or a lox, but it's actually raw salmon with a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of olive oil, a bit of onion to add some zing to it. It's so tender, it just melts on your tongue. When you walk in the room, the first thing you notice are all the spectacles that the servers wear. They've got a real collection here. I feel like I'm in Elton John's dressing room or something. So one of the things that the Love All Boys do, for an extra fee, mind you, is they take the women out on the sidewalk for a bit of a stroll. It gives them the appearance of being the most popular girl in all of Tokyo. It appears that the Love All Boys also have their own web show, which broadcasts live from the Love All Cafe. And now we ask Bob to join us in a game of strength. All right, this should be really interesting. Stop. Me versus three skinny little guys to see who can rip this uh, phone book in half. Go! <laughs> well, apparently love all doesn't conquer all. Salad. Oh, seafood salad. Yeah. Look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. And they're serving squid that are this tiny so that women can eat it delicately. My favorite dish is pasta. What is it? Ah, risotto. It's creamy. It's rich. The risotto is still a little bit al dente, which is nice. And they even have a little bit of crunchy breadcrumbs on top. So you get all those different textures and tastes all happening at the same time. That's what you want from risotto. If you call us and I interview you and I say, You good looking boy. Then you can become a love all boy. I really love the guys really the grasses, kind of sexy and intelligent. Woo! So what do you think? Oh, good. Cool. Is it working? Oh, yeah. okay. okay. What's the first step in the training? Lesson one. one. How to lift up glasses in sexy way. One. No, 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 Oh, 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 the knuckle! <laughs> they make really nice sweets. They can put my name on it. That's so sweet. Cuttlefish and cold fish egg roll. 
cuttlefish with codfish egg roe. Wow, look at this plate. You've got fish roe, squid, pasta. I mean, it's not very often you see fish roe on top of pasta. I mean, that's classic Italian-Japanese fusion right there. Very nice. Thank you. Compliments to the chef. Arigato. Was that sexy? The boys are here. The mixture of maid and boyfriend. It's like a perfect man. <laughs> But before I become a perfect man, <laughs> I must master one final move. And cute, cute, cute. Meow. I just hope I can pull it off. Meow. Yeah.